What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel and another bolt action video here as we continue on looking at the Market Garden campaign scenarios and eventually everything else that we have in the Market Garden book, including four selectors and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> This one here is a little bit more involved than the previous two, which were kind of more simple skirmishes. This one, the bridge at Son, is again a little bit more involved because there are some sort of predetermined uh, units, and more or less the train is going to be very specific for this one, given the nature of the mission. Hence, uh, you know, obviously if there's a bridge, there's probably going to be water, right? So we'll see that in just a second here. But then also again, very specific lists that we have available to us here, and actually are provided in the scenario description as well. So basically the allies are trying to move up and secure a bridge, but that bridge happens to be guarded by some German 88s, which the German player will actually get to use in game. And so that's again, already gonna require that the uh, German player at least has access to 388s in some way, shape or form, or at least something as a very close approximation to that that can be reasonably proxied so again if you don't have the 88s you know if you only have like two for example you know you might come up with something where well the other 88 can be turned into let's say another squad or something like that or some other piece of equipment some other unit perhaps that would be suitable and reasonable without overpowering the scenario so the table is set up to represent the village of Son on the Wilhelmina Canal. German defender must set up his starting officer and infantry inside the village and um, his starting machine gun team inside the guard tower and the 88s in the predetermined location. So let's just pause there for a second and take a look at the map here. So again, we got the canal, got a little bit on the left side here, mainly the tower, the bridge. We can see the 88 emplacements there. So again, rough approach for the allies. And then the airborne is also over there and then the Germans will again also partially be starting over in the village itself. So again, lots of different things going on here. The rest of the German units will be placed in reserves. So, and the uh, allies will also get some reserves here. So the US attacker rolls D3 to determine the number of entering units per turn. And that's basically just an ongoing wave of troopers dropping and must deploy those units within the U.S. Airborne Deployment Area, and those will be subject to the Combat Jump Rules. Again, we'll illuminate all the uh, special rules here in a separate video for Market Garden, but um, again, you'll frequently be referencing those as you play through the book. The scenario is played between attacking U.S. and defending German forces, naturally. Um, as it says, so the U.S. and German forces should be taken from the selectors provided. Again, we'll get to that at the end of the scenario. So again, this is going to be a very specific list. So you might, uh, if you know, if you don't have access to exactly um, what is being suggested here, so again, with especially the, the tougher part being on the German player to provide those 88s, um, you might either, again, modify the scenario or just skip it and try something a little bit different. So, but also suggesting here, basically trying to keep things around 1,000 points or less, okay? Uh, that being said, though, the Germans get the 88s for free, so the Allies, again, are going to have that uphill battle there. Especially if the if the 88s are rolling very hot, it's going to be uh, a long day for the Allies. But the Allies get to keep bringing in more guys. So first turn, because of the restricted nature of the approach axis of the airborne troops, players should use the procedure um, for the special rules uh, for this scenario. Also, again... Uh, use combat jumps instead of sticks for this mission here. So you get another look here at the suggested map. Now again, as long as you get something reasonably close to that, you'll be fine. Uh, buildings, there's a fair few here, but again, you can always eliminate one or two there. The, the big thing is going to typically be, you know, having a suitable water feature, a bridge, and then again, for the German player, the 88s. So, and coming up with something reasonable for the guard tower as well. Anyway, so we're going to continue on here in just a moment as we get into the other details of the scenario. All right, so the U.S. Airborne must eliminate the 88 millimeter guns and have units on both sides of the bridge and be holding on to it uh, before the last turn, before the Germans can destroy it, on or before the last turn. So at the end of turn eight, so this is already going to be a longer one, right? So at the end of turn eight, roll a die on the one, two, three roll. Uh, Germans detonate and they uh, basically blow up the bridge, right? On a four, five, or six, you play one more turn. If the U.S. Airborne has not reached their objective by the end of turn nine, that's a long, long time, the Germans detonate the explosives and then, um, again, take out the bridge. So victory here. At the end of the game, calculate which side is won by adding, adding up the following things. 
German player gets two victory points for each eliminated U.S. airborne unit. The U.S. player gets two for each 88, captured or destroyed. The U.S. player also scores a victory point for each German unit destroyed. The U.S. player scores five for securing the bridge at the end. So you can tell where the bulk of the points are. Germans just have to hold out as long as possible, keep popping allied units, and try not to give up those 88s, and certainly not try to give up the bridge. Special rules here, too. Um... Dick Winters is a compulsory unit for the Americans, and special rules can be found in the Legends of Market Garden chapter. Again, we'll get to that later. So, again, this book, like all the campaign books, will reference all their special rules, and in many cases, like the special characters, and in some cases, again, compulsory as in this scenario. So, now this is also a part of the book where they explain combat jump. We're not going to linger on it for this video, because that would make it a little too long, but we'll cover that, again, in a separate video. So, and we will continue on to the other details of the scenario. All right, guys, we're back. And as mentioned, so this particular scenario does specify very sort of uh, or outline specific uh, forces for both sides that they have available. Now, again, we've already mentioned the Germans have the free 88s, but also here the Hermann Göring training unit. So the initial German infantry squad inside Son is a regular um, uh, grenadier squad, basically. However, uh, it has a morale of 10 and functions as a regular group in every other way. This squad is, uh, or also has the fanatic special rule, and due to their Fallschirmjäger background, also do not suffer the minus one uh, for firing on the move penalty. So pretty cool unit, um, actually. And, uh, you know, definitely, I think, tactics-wise for the, the German player, you know, if you can keep that unit uh, as intact as possible for as long as possible, and just keep sort of running a fighting withdrawal with that, that unit is going to be very valuable for you uh, towards the end of the game. Rapid attack. Due to the swift movement of the paratroopers, the German infantry cannot fire in the first turn. All other units fire normally, so best thing there. Again, if you can't fire, um, you know, and combat might you know, be a little bit too risky, close combat, that is. So I would, you know, say that as Germans, get yourself into great positions for turn two. Make it so that maybe the Allies don't even really get any good shots at you in turn one. You know, uh, the clock is on your side and is a long clock because we're playing at least the eight turns. German reinforcements. Starting on turn two, the German defender may bring in their units, uh, their reserve units on the board. German units start up to six from the edge of the board. The German defender rolls d3 to determine the number of units entering. However, on a roll of one, uh, no units enter the board that turn. So, yeah, it's kind of rough. The German player chooses which side of the board each unit will enter from and roll a d6 for each unit to see where uh, where on which side of the board the unit will enter. So again, that's reference on the map on the previous page. So again, will not be guaranteed any one particular spot, but that makes it kind of fun. It's going to be rough, though, of course, when you do not get reinforcements and the Allies are just continuing to pile it on. And then the 88, so the German defender starts with the 388 guns set in predetermined locations in Son. If models are not available, use large tokens to represent the guns and small markers to represent the crews. Again, that's going to be the one, I think, aside from the terrain requirements, right? This is going to be the tough part. Not every German player is necessarily going to have three. Most people have at least one, but three is uh, a little rough in some cases. Again, I would say, you know, if if you really do want, um, you know, if you don't feel like running the tokens, um, you know, throwing in something like maybe a, um, a pack 40 or something like that just as a stand in you know other viable things or you know maybe sort of an 88 one of them again is an actual pack 40 with the, the rules for it so a little bit less flexible than the 88s in use but you know sometimes it is okay to vary the scenario so and as they show here right so regular and all the special rules for that now on the allied side we have the Airborne Platoon Selector. So all units in this platoon have the ability to deploy using Combat Jump, which again the scenario specifies that you uh, basically have to. So, And then all units must be chosen at Veteran level or at Regular if a Veteran option is not available. Inexperienced units can't be included here. So again, pretty typical stuff, although your, your, your leader here is going to be Dick Winters. Uh, two airborne infantry squads, and then the other options here. Obviously, no vehicles. 
So, and then lastly, we'll finish up with some info on the German forces more specifically. All right, guys, coming back here. So the German reinforced platoon selector. So we have, again, lieutenant here, first or second. The Herr, uh Grenadier Infantry Squad, medium machine gun, the, the Flax. So that's our starting forces. Reinforcements, again, we're definitely going to want to bring those uh, infantry squads. Ideally, some machine guns will be pretty nice, too, if we can get them set up to keep the Allies from getting set up on the bridge. Sniper might be very useful in this scenario, too, if we can get a good spot for them just to put those wonderful pin markers on. Mortar could also be certainly useful. And then uh, the Germans do get access to some vehicles here. So we get our choice of basically um, some half tracks. Puma could be nasty here. Everybody's Everybody loves the Puma. And all these different flavors here. So we've got scout cars, half tracks, etc. So um, again, depending on the points, I think overall bodies are going to be certainly the most useful for the Germans. But uh, a vehicle could prove pretty nasty for the, the airborne if they don't have the right tools to um, essentially deal with it, right? Um, and the Puma, I think, you know, uh, is just one of those nasty, nasty ones to try and remove without the proper tools. So, especially with Recce and everything as well. So, there you have it, guys. Again, this is a pretty hefty scenario. Scenario 3 here. So, again, the bridge at Sun for Market Garden. Again, going to have some terrain requirements for you and some unit requirements, but overall could be a very fun one, again, as the Germans try to keep the Allies from taking that bridge and could be just a very nasty scenario uh, in a good way um, and very tense as, again, you know, every every last person, every last squad that's lost, every bit closer that the Allies get to that bridge is just going to make that scenario that much more tense. And again, if you, know, you get bored of playing it the regular way, certainly um, you know throw in something like night fighting or other other factors and just kind of vary the mission a little bit but also with the random reinforcements showing up the way they do could be again should be enough variety there already to keep the scenario pretty fresh but let us know guys if you've tried this scenario what your thoughts are and would you like to try it if you haven't so again hit us up in the comments like and subscribe as always help keep the channel going and plug it away at these videos for you guys and we'll see you in the next one take care